Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Purple Coin, and today I want to answer a question from Green Mountain Grandpa. Uh, if coins trade at gray sheet bid or less when you do dealer to dealer transactions, why can't a collector get the same deal from the dealer? Your profit or loss would be the same in either case. So this is a good question because I know it's something that gets on people's minds once in a while. Um, you'll see a dealer dealing with another dealer, and you know you know that they're getting different pricing than if you wanted to just buy a coin from the dealer. And so I know sometimes this rubs people the wrong way. But uh, let me make some comparisons for you and talk a little bit about why uh, dealer to dealer pricing is often different. Uh, but it's not, it's not always different. It just kind of varies on the people. Uh, you, we talked about this recently where we talked about having a trusted relationship with uh, people in the collecting community and how that really tends to afford you different prices and different opportunities. Uh, based on those relationships. This is how the world works. Uh, you know, you naturally tend towards the people that are in your inner circle, that are your friends. If you happen to know someone who has those uh, skybox seats to the to the Cubs game, you know, you, you get to go with them because you're his buddy. He doesn't just offer them to anyone who comes in off the street. So there's a relationship factor that goes into it. Uh, to the profit loss question, this is a really interesting one because actually the profit loss is a little bit different than that because really when a dealer is dealing with another dealer they're not actually uh, dealing with them every day selling merchandise at retail in other words if every last customer that came in the door wanted to buy stuff at a wholesale or if the dealer had to sell stuff at a wholesale level the wholesale the uh, the profit margin the profit losses was indicated in the question it that disappears right so if all of a sudden you had to sell everything that you bought at maybe five or ten percent less than you were selling it at before, well, all of a sudden you you know it just your numbers start to not work out at all. So, the in theory, it's it, it actually isn't true that the profit loss is the same because realistically you're only selling some coins at a, at a lower rate. Uh, also, um, the reason why a dealer will sell something at a, a wholesale level has to do with a, a couple different things. Sometimes it's just how long inventory has been sitting around. So, uh, you know, I know, for example, if I have something that's been sitting around for a while, I'm a lot more likely to sell it uh, at a discounted rate to a dealer or even a customer because it's been in inventory for a while. When you look at uh, the concept of the dealer to dealer wholesale, why are they getting a better price? The big thing to look at has a lot to do with volume. So I've had guys come in over the years who said, hey, you know, I'm a best pocket dealer, you know, I want dealer pricing and, you know, and, and, you know, they'd go through all my coins and they'd buy one coin. And so generally you're going to price things differently to someone who does more business with you. Now, once again, this can be a long-term customer relationship. And I know plenty of dealers who sell at a better rate to their customers who they do a lot of business with and, uh, or will give a deal to them. If they got a deal on a coin, they'll give a deal to uh, a longtime customer before they'd even give a deal to a to a wholesale you know dealer to dealer transaction but the volume matters right so um, you know the people who complain about and I'm not, I'm not saying that this question was a complaint but there are people who come in and complain about the fact that a dealer will uh, you know give another dealer a better price and they have to pay retail well that customer is usually not coming in and buying up you know, all the remaining scrap sterling silver or, you know, all of your leftover this or your leftover that. And, you know, they're not doing larger transactions. And this is true in business in general. So it, you have customer loyalty programs at almost anywhere you shop nowadays where, it, you know, if you're doing a large volume, you can get a discount. This is true also uh, in, in most business senses, most business formats, the price is negotiable depending on volume. And, and at a wholesale level, that's, that's always been true. So most businesses, you don't see any type of wholesale and retail transactions happen in front of you, right? That's is kind of unique to the collecting hobby because you can be at a coin show or in a coin shop and see dealers dealing with each other. What, you know, when you go to Walmart, you don't see, uh, you know, a bunch of guys in suits negotiating a price on, you know, whatever the Polly Pockets or whatever, you know, kind of item they're going to sell, their shoes, their TVs, you know, that you're not sitting down with Vizio and Walmart and watching them hash out how many units at what price. So, so really all that type of stuff happens in every marketplace. 
but you see it at a coin show and you see it in front of you if you're at a coin shop and see dealers. So it's, it's this weird different world because that doesn't happen almost anywhere else where you do uh, a, a, where you do business, where you purchase items. So anyway, there are several reasons why the average coin collector doesn't get dealer pricing and those are, those are some of them and I thought I'd share those thoughts with you because I, I always like to share kind of the behind the scenes look for people who are intrigued about how the hobby works but how the business works also. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.